Uh, hi guys, this is uh, Top Tier Tips with uh, the Blue Kono Super review. It's been a while, uh, been a long while, but it turns out organizing a cast for two people is way easier than organizing one for four. So that's what we've gone ahead and done. Today I've just got El Prez with me. Yo, because we can't do yeah. these videos without me. Yes, that one. Uh, <laughs> they, they can technically go without me, but for some reason they never do. Uh, but that's okay as well. So we'll just go straight to blue anyway. Uh, sorry it's so late, but uh, whatever. Anyway, our first card is Troublemaker Aqua. She's a 001k. Uh, she's a brainstorm. Pay one to tap itself, which is fine. Uh, for every for every climax you hit, you search um, your waiting room for a level cost, what was zero or lower, and put it on a slot on stage. And then it also gives the center middle row um, uh, hand on call. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually not a big fan of this card at all. Uh, it has one it has one upside over the other two brainstorms in this set, which would be the um, the Kazuma Search Brainstorm and the and the Megumin uh, Salvage Brainstorm, which get all the relevant characters anyway. Uh, the fact of the matter is, there are cards that you'd rather just play, and you also can't set up your late game with this card. Um, like I did say, the um, the benefit to this one is that you can just tap one character so you can use your other slot for something else. And that is actually relevant for some builds of the blue deck, but I don't think it's anywhere near as um, anywhere near as effective to be using this and not just use... Uh, like you, you can work around it very easily. It is still Brainstorm, it is still Advantage, but I don't think it's a very good one, and... Uh, like the the Yonkor bit is is fine, but it's just not really worth it because um, you do have a plus and climax combo that you don't really that you don't mind having around, but it's also not a great plus and climax combo. Like it's not a strong one in the blue deck, and all your other cards are usually big enough to just let you counter over them. That's obviously preferable. So um, I don't actually think this is a particularly strong card. Uh, I'm just giving it a vanilla playable rating. Uh, um, I agree with the playable rating. Uh, the problem with the secondary effect is that unless you're cheating into something that's like has a detriment when it enters or something along those lines, it's just never really worth it. And oftentimes, if you're playing those kind of cards, you don't want to play another medium card to make the other one playable. In that case, like two bad cards does not make a good deck. So yeah, there are uh, there are a few cards which um. There are a few cards with common play effects. So there's one that mills three, which is, um, yeah, and then it's I think fine. It mills something, and it's whatever. Uh, and, uh, yeah. I mean, and, and it's all fine. But then, like you know, a lot of times you're also like sometimes just doing this to chain something. Like you use a salvage rain turn to get back a drop search or to search your deck for something. In which case, like you need to put that card in your hand to get the effect. Uh, so like the fact is like, it's putting a cost zero or lower into from the waiting room in the stage. It's almost functionally similar to just playing it from hand with a salvage brainstormer, and the first effect isn't powerful enough to necessarily warrant a weaker brainstorm effect. Yep. I should mention that uh, uh, some of the cost zeros you would want to cheat out, they don't act like, uh, most of them don't actually have effects that you care about playing them from hand from. So you've got a 1-0 climax combo, it gains 1,500 on climax play, so you don't lose out on anything there. You've got a 107k. Uh, it's got some depth, like uh, it's got flavor text detriments, and neither of them involve coming into play, so that doesn't matter either. And then you've got a 10 sort of Azusa thingy, uh, which is a uh, uh, which which it does it on death, so you're not really missing out there either. And the same goes for the 00 Megumin. You're not losing out too much, but you're not really gaining anything. It's just not a—it's not a particularly strong effect, I suppose, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, and, and the fact is that it's super unflexible, and you just oftentimes it's better to have a more flexible tool than than a more narrow one, unless that narrow tool is a straight up blowout. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so playable. Move on. Next card. Um, may you be blessed with kind encounters, Eris. Uh, so. What a, what a title. Yeah, um, this is a, it's a bit of a sad card, to be honest. So the first ability is it's an advanced summon if you've got a specific card in your clock. This card is actually a pretty decent card, all things said and done. We'll get to it. Uh, but um, 
yeah, just just assume that you're going to be playing that card in this deck. Uh, the next ability is it's um, so a lot of people really like the level two heals because they think they can stabilize level two, and apparently they don't have any decks that attack that in their meta games. I'm not a huge fan of that. I prefer strict pluses, and this is exactly that. It is a advanced summon that comes into play, gets a uh, and gets a card from your waiting room to your hand. Yeah, adventure or goddess, which is yes, which is functionally everything, and that's the end of this card's text in relevance to an advanced summon. It is also a finisher, so it also has once per turn when your front row middle character attacks, you can pay one ditch two to stand. Um, sorry, to reveal the top card of your deck. If it is uh, a character card, basically, uh, you may pay this cost. Uh, sorry, if you if sorry, no. yeah, if, it's if a it key. is, you just stand it. So yeah, you pay the cost understand. before you check. You pay the cost before you check, and the reason it's costed like this, as opposed to being costed higher, is because you have to pay the cost and take a blind shot. It's like the uh, very old Persona Four Naruto, which is a terrible card, by the way. Yeah, uh, this is not an ability you'll activate very often, if at all. Hopefully you won't have to activate it at all. But it is actually a pretty strong ability with the next level three we're going to talk about because that one will make your big swings more likely to go in. Um, as, far so, as, as far as an early play is concerned, yeah. like this is perfectly fine. Like 9-5 is, isn't is great for an early play. Like You'll lose to everyone else's early plays, but it does immediately replace itself. So you're, mm. you're always being... like At least you're setting up... Um, there might be some awkwardness, uh, depending on when you refresh as to how many actual targets you'll have for the salvage effect, but usually that'll be fine. Oh, uh, um, there is a, um, the, the way you get around this is there's a 2-1 level support from the, from the trial deck. The reason I say level support is because the only, um, the only 2k support in this set is red and kind of awkward to fit into the blue deck, but, um, anyway, the 2-1 from the trial deck is blue, and it has the... It has literal us on it. It has come yeah. and play ditch card mill four. So and, you get some number of choices, which is fine. Yeah, I mean, like, there are ways to increase the number of choices, but there is some awkwardness with it, and even using the 2 1 requires, like, an extra stock cost, which you may not be willing, willing to pay at the time. Yeah, like, um, if you want to consider this as a card which will live, you have to consider it as basically a three cost advance summon. Yeah. Uh, which, again, is fine. But that's like a change, right? Like you're, yeah. and I, we haven't like seen changes be viable in literally forever. It's been quite some time, yeah. But the the Gochi Uso one is a a three cost advance summon. I don't think it's great, but it's fine. Uh, some people seem to think it is outright broken. Those people don't understand what good means, but that's okay as well. This card gets this a playable fine. plus for me. I think it's a perfectly oh. serviceable early play and i actually do like the second effect it is blind but most of the time i think there's like an, most of the time you're gonna have like an 80 percent chance to blind flip a character like that's just yeah like well maybe not 80 percent a little like, lower but at still least 60 percent and if it's like 60 percent, that means your deck is like actually all climaxes yeah which is which is fine. bad because you're going into the attack phase when but, you're in the attack phase but. i mean it, regardless <laughs> like you're still okay with that because like if your deck is mostly climaxes like as long as you don't like trigger them all in which case you deserved it it's yeah. still fine like, um, people will probably be unhappy with this card because its abilities don't work together, and it makes it a mediocre finisher and a mediocre advanced summon. But since it can do both those roles with some decent level of efficiency, I think it's a fine inclusion in the deck. I, I have no issue playing this card. I don't think it is as good as, um, as the 3-2 Darkness, if you can play that card instead. And I think you should play that card instead. But this card is also just fine. Like, there's there's no problem with including this in your deck. Uh, we'll get to the card that you need to clock as well. That card is also fine. There are problems with it, but it is also, like I said, perfectly playable. I'm giving it playable plus as well. Yeah, I, th I think that's, like, a very fair rating for this card. Like, you're trading some raw power for, for more flexibility. Mm. So this next card is Aqua. She's a 3-2-10k. Uh, oh, this card... Alright, so during battles involving this, your opponent can't play backups from hand. So uh, they can still play advanced, but they can't play backups, which is fine, I suppose. When this is placed from hand to stage, this is the uh, exciting ability. You may pay an extra one. If you do, your opponent chooses two climaxes from their waiting room. 
then shuffles all other cards back to the library. So you are setting them up so they they can have six climaxes minimum and is probably relatively uncompressed unless you're playing against like Milky or Guardian. Or six whatever. max. Yeah, six is the maximum they can have in their deck. Uh, so we'll, we'll we can talk about that effect right after this. I want to talk about the climax combo. When Resurrection, which is the pants, is placed to the climax, it is the pants, isn't it? It is the pants, is placed to the climax zone, you may discard a card. If you do, choose a character in your clock and put it on any slot on stage. Uh, so that's a pretty serviceable card. You talk a bit about it, I gotta take this phone call. Um, yeah, the first effect is almost never gonna be relevant. Um, it's only 10k. So you already need to have like some sort of power pump from like a back row, so you need to have like a level assist for the plus 2k bump. Which we already established the plus 2k bump is a little bit awkward, so you're probably playing the level assist because it's on color. Uh, so most of the time your opponent doesn't even necessarily need a backup to counter over this. The, um, the second effect is really, really obnoxious, but not always relevant. Uh, if your opponent just refreshed, clearly that ability doesn't do anything. And the ceiling is is entirely dependent on how many cards they already have on board, in stock, and in hand. If they have like a full hand, a full board, and a full stock, you know, yes, you shuffle the way all the other garbage in their deck into the waiting room or in grave your waiting room into the deck. But that's still like at least thirty five cards and six, and that's or six climaxes and thirty five at, at like the best case, and that's that's like good, but it's not necessarily game ending. Uh, the last effect, that's, I mean, that that's a lot of fun. I like the last effect. It's TD Ricky, right? Kind of. It's not restricted at, like TD Ricky is. Oh, sure, yeah, it gets anything. Uh, it's, uh, it gets it, effectively anything, yeah. And it's, it's a heal. Like, yeah, it is heal effectively a heal that dodges anti-heal. Um, it doesn't necessarily, like, having one of this does not mean you get to flood the board, though. You still need to... You know, have two on the board minimum, which means like that gets you your level assist, I guess, if you need the power pump. Um, oh, you can also get the um the card we just talked yeah, about, and the, the card RS, above that which does... um is actually good with this card because you know decompression and whatnot. But like, I don't know. The second effect is going to range from like backbreaking to does nothing, so it's like a very high variance effect. Yeah, I think it is. I think it's a card you can bet on, but it's not a super safe bet. Like. High risk, high reward, like you said. High variance. Uh, my thoughts on this card is it's playable. Uh, the second effect is what you play it for. I don't think you need to play the Climax combo with it, but if you're playing an Aqua deck, then yeah, whatever, that's your thing. <laughs> I don't uh, I Personally, think, I don't mm -hmm. think the second effect is strong enough to necessarily warrant uh, a strong playable rating, so I'm going to stick to playable minus. I think the third effect is, is okay. Uh, Heal the stage is fine. It's just like... At least in blue, the finisher, which is basically, you know, the, the Eris above, is, is fine. It's just fine. Uh, mm, but the fact they that it's do Climax tied is... Yeah, they, they do work well in tandem because the above Eris is not Climax tied. But, I don't know, it still feels underwhelming to me. Uh, so, yeah, it's so, not pushed. It's definitely not pushed. It's definitely not, yeah, it's definitely not pushed. Uh, the second effect is, is super high variance, right? Uh, how much are you willing to bet on it? Uh, I'm not mm. usually that guy. I'm not usually betting very hard on, on these kind of effects. I play bad decks, not stupid decks. Or maybe they're both. I mean, see, the exciting thing about this card is if you splash it into, say, uh, a magic shell, you can use the explosion magic combos to go off and try and burn your opponent for obscene amounts of damage. Again, this doesn't work all the time. Even against, like, uncompressed opponents, the five damage might just hit a climax and then you look a bit silly. Uh, but... It's it's fine. Like it is a card you can bet on. I'm giving it a, a flat playable rating. I don't think it's playable minus. I think it is just straight. It's fine. Like I I put it in a deck as like a one of because this is a deck that can get what it needs. Sure. I'm gonna stick to playable minus. I'm generally pretty un unimpressed here. But that's... yeah. Like over like obviously you're gonna have times where this card is obscene and that'll uh, make you biased towards the card. But if you step a bit back, it's less obscene because there's going to be lots of times where this doesn't do very much. I think that it does enough, enough of the time to give it a slightly higher rating. Sure. All right, next card, Kind Goddess, Eris. It's a 002k. 
When this is placed from hand stage, choose one of your, your other characters with adventurer or goddess, and that character gains 1k for the turn. And when you place a climax to the climax zone, you may bounce this card to your hand. If you do, draw a card, then ditch a card. Oh, I actually like this. This is sweet. I am very unhappy that these effects aren't reversed. Like, it should be the draw ditch come in play, and then it should be, yeah, it should uh, be bounce, pa- bounce yeah. power. But th- it doesn't stop me from thinking this effect is, this card is sweet. I mean, in terms of just, like, it's cool. It does cool things. Yes. I don't think so it's this, powerful things. This card but... is supposed to, climb at, um, supposed to combo with the book combo, which is pretty much um, a, an exact copy of the railgun one, which is... Uh, if, if you have X, get a cost zero from your waiting room, put it anywhere on the stage. Uh, and the point is to do this beforehand so you have empty slots. And then you um, you can draw a drop, and then you can drop a card you want to put onto the field or whatever. Like, There's lots of little synergies, but what I think should have happened is that this would should have been like a 1k card with come in play, draw, well, maybe a 500 power card with come in play, draw a drop. And then when the climax is played, you may give something 1k or 1,500 or God knows what. I don't know power ratio. I don't know like power um, math, rationing or whatever. Yeah. yeah, because it's not like that. This card is a lot worse as just a play. Like playing it there means you can't draw towards your climax. You can't draw towards your combo. I mean, the climax is the main one because the next card gets you your combo pretty pretty efficiently. And because of that, it's. A little less good than I think this card could have been. Like it, it definitely could have been that that good without breaking anything. Uh, I still think it's a solid card. I still like the um the bounce back, the whole bounce back thing. Uh, the fact that these effects are tacked on like this is a kind of kind of annoying, but it's fine. Like uh, I think it's a playable plus card. I I agree. I mean I. What I, one thing I really like about the second effect, of course, is you know let's say you have a climax in your hand and you just want to cycle it, this makes it way much, way better. Mm-hmm. Like, uh... You, you need know, two climaxes, though, right? Well, like, you just play this, and then you pump something, and you cycle a climax, and bounces back to your hand, and, like, you know, hand fix a bit. But you, but you need two climaxes, right? Oh, oh, you mean if you want to just hand fix and have a climax you're going to play? Yeah, I mean, like... It, oh, yeah, sure. If you just have, like, a spare climax, right? Like, you're at level zero, and you're in a position where you might just want to go for a soul rush... This, this makes that a lot less of a risky line to necessarily be going for. Uh, I don't know if I'd want to Soul Rush with, with... Well, I mean, you could. Like, this deck can definitely sustain it with um, Runner and Ricky and all of that good stuff. Like, Soul Rushing is sometimes questionable, but, like... Another thing I actually do like is you could theoretically... Uh, when you bounce and discard uh, for the level 1 common that we'll get in a bit, you can just bring this back. When you go for the next turn, you can kind of just use this as your engine to an extent. To hand fix, but oh, yeah. Then, yeah, you can actually do that, can't you? You can um, you can bounce, bounce this discard, card, then discard this. Um, yeah, you can discard this uh, from your hand, which is mm, that's that's not too bad actually. That's you know that's that's like a it's not an advantage engine per se. I mean, it kind of is because it's the free card on the board that you're returning to your hand on the following. It turn. is an advantage. It is an advantage engine if you are using the climax yes. otherwise it's just not really anything but in the sense like the hand fixing is nice and it does a lot of little things that that do matter so mm. I, I think i do think playable plus is an accurate rating for this card yep uh well i'll talk a bit more about this and the one zero when we get to the one zero but for now we've got uh this is the clock condition for the eris advanced summon meaning of killing snow sprites aqua uh it's uh we haven't seen this since i think black rock shooter when this is placed from hand to stage, you can clock a card from your hand. If you do, search your deck for a goddess and add it to your hand. Do you like free pluses? I like free it's pluses. It's not a free plus. Oh, You've got to clock a card from hand. Oh, man. It's it's a wash. Like, yeah, it's it's, a, it's wash. a drop searcher, except you take pain and don't pay stock. I, I don't know how stock hungry this deck is. It's not. Like, um, you can go without paying stock if you have to. And that's good. It means you can compress. Yeah. More importantly, this like this lets you accelerate to level one, so you can get more value out of your one combo, I suppose. But yeah, it's fine. I like the free hand fix. I like not having to pay stock for it. I... No, it's um, it's more than fine. Yeah. One thing we should note is that um, you can't get adventurers, so you can literally only get goddess traits, which is only Aqua and Eris. Mm-hmm. 
that's fine because in the deck that would run this, you can get your advanced summon, you can get your level one game, you can get your level one wall, you can get your uh, level support and your level threes, and yeah, you can get a decent number of utility cards as well. Like I think the card is part of Luthwine. I think not having to pay stock is like pretty reasonable upside. I mean, it's kind of awkward in the late game to be clocking yourself for a hand fix. Yeah. The problem is that this card is just really bad from level two onwards, uh, which is why I can never call this anything more than just like playable, a, a playable card. Yeah, uh, it it's just it's unfortunate. It but, it is fine in the early game. Like it is, it's more than fine. Probably two five is actually a pretty big number because most things won't be able to get over it unless they're supported. So you might even get actual pluses off this. Um, playable. Yeah. All right, so now we come to Eris, which is the the Railgun Climax combo I was talking about. When your Climax is placed at a Climax zone, oh, it's a 1045. When your Climax is placed at a Climax zone, this gets 1 5 for turn. And when Revive is placed at your Climax zone, uh, Revive being the book, if this is in the front row and you have another Goddess character, so if you have another copy of this or if you have uh, Aqua sitting somewhere, you may choose a cost zero or lower character in your waiting room with either Adventurer or Goddess trait and put it in any slot on stage. Uh, this is okay so i think this is a lot worse than the railgun combo because you don't get the additional compression that you really want from a primarily costless deck but you do get to attack for probably 7.5k uh because you can bring back supports with the um with the assist power uh you might have gotten power from the bounce back which is definitely something you should consider and uh yeah what can i say uh, it is worse on defense by far, so it is only a 4-5 or 5k on defense. You're not going to be really countering very much with this, and it's going to die almost certainly. But the fact that you probably plussed from it, and the fact that you've got to filter through your deck, uh, sort of carve your hand and field a little bit, I think it makes this card fine, but it is nowhere near approaching good. Like, it is it is not even close. I, I think I completely agree. Um... The advantage is very awkward, uh, getting only cost zeros. Um, part of your level 1 combo game is usually to set up your level 3, and this literally cannot do that without the additional help of the zero zero. Yeah, the bounce back, which even even that card like only draws one card. Like That's, that's not helpful. It's not actually beneficial or helpful. It's just uh, tap the top of your deck, hope it's a card you care about. Yeah, exactly. If not, then yeah. Um, so, so it's not like, like the real... Yeah. You can play around it. Like with the railgun one, what you did was you hold, you held your late game later, um, earlier on, and you'll just discard level one cards that you kind of want to bring back, like the one zero support, which is something that this deck can play as well. There's a one zero global five hundred with pay two tap search, or is it pay two tap draw? I forget. It's one of those two, and you can just hold the other cards, or what I think is the better option, you just. Uh, bring back like a salvage brainstorm and salvage brainstorm your cards back. Yeah. Which lets yeah. you kind of take advantage of the uh, the clocker as well because it means you're you're saving the stock to get more potential uses out of your salvage brainstorm. Um, and that's also again another theoretical plus to using the zero zero that bounce backs uh, because you can always tap it before uh, going to play the climax phase and then bounce it back to your hand to, to get more fixing. So, like, a lot of little things, but ultimately the card is still eh. Yeah, like, um, I think that the Railgun uh, Climax combo is a lot better, and I think that card is barely, like, a playable plus at best. Like, that's a, that's, that's pretty generous. I, I think it is functional, but not great. Um, and this card is worse than that in, in most ways. It does attack as a 7k, which is, which is nice, I suppose. It's, it's fine. But if you have 0-0 zero, zero and Railgun, your attacking is much bigger than 7k as well. So. I mean, like, a problem that you're running into also is that, like, you're on defense 5k at most, which is, like, free farm. Yeah. You, you, you don't even have an oversized counter in this set, I don't think. I think it's only one fives you've got, but, uh, yeah, no, we'll see. Um, I, I should probably check that. I might be wrong. It's been quite a while. Um... There is an Aqua counter, which is good. Um, and you don't have another 1-0 oversized counter. Oh, well. Anyway, uh, we, we tried. So, yeah, playable for that one. Uh, the next card is a... It's a cool card. Um, in that it's effectively ours. So. <laughs> when this is placed from stage to waiting room, you may reveal up to three cards from the top of your deck. 
if you reveal any cards this way, choose up to one character among them with Adventure or Goddess, add it to hand, ditch the rest, and then discard a card. Uh, I, I don't really know what to say about this aside from it's it's on reverse Azza. It's like a, a very poor man's Kirito. Kirito is a lot better than this, the 1-0. This card is so it's still awkward. Azza. I mean, it's only three, and you discard if you choose to reveal anything. Well, you're gonna hit something, right? Like it's you're not gonna miss. I mean, like it's missing with this is like slightly more likely than missing with an actual Azusa, which does happen. Yeah. And unfortunately, like I would have probably preferred the discard as a cost, just because. Mm. Usually, when you're going into an Azusa effect, you know what you, you want to discard. Well, no, I I disagree because your argument here is loot versus rummage, and loot is always better. Sure. I mean, that's fair. But I don't know yeah. if it's really loot versus rummage, because you're only it, looking at three instead of four. What do you mean? That doesn't change it. That doesn't change it at all. Like, it's still loot versus rummage is draw, discard versus discard, draw. Uh, in this case, if you look at the three, find nothing you like, you can take a random card and then ditch it immediately. Me. Yeah, you ditch it immediately because you don't want that. Whereas uh, Azusa is quite clearly a rummage you have to discard before any anything's revealed i don't think the problem is like between loot and rummage and uh only revealing three that's it's still revealing three that's fine well i mean on death is also incredibly awkward yeah that's the thing on death is really awkward i don't like that very much i know that this was the centerpiece level one in the um in the deck that uh Monsieur Matsui won with in Neo Standard, but that deck is also a complete joke, and unfortunately we don't have Sud and B around to defend that deck fervently, as I'm sure he would have liked to. <laughs> yeah, this this card was a four of in that deck, if I recall correctly. Yeah. Uh, not not the correct four of, in my opinion. I I think it's still playable. Playable, it's fine. Oh, no, it does it's good playable. things. It's playable it's plus like, even. It's a bad Azusa. It's a playable plus card. It has to be, right? Yeah. It's still just it, it's a just 5k. Like, it's, just a, it's just a little bit annoying. Hmm. I don't know. I, I don't should know. be mentioned, you can pull this with the Eris combo and get the full Azusa effect, which is more than fine, if you ask me. Combos. Kind of. Combos kind of. are only good when they add more to the sum of their parts. This this is barely more than the sum of their parts. This is like 1 plus 1 equals 2.4 or something. Yeah. I, I don't think it's much of a combo. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, playable plus, yeah. I, I think. Yeah. Alright, next card. It's a zombie. Uh, this, this one I actually think is pretty decent. Oh no, it's Sacred Turn Undead. Is it a zombie? No, I don't, no, well, it's not a zombie. It, it, the card's called Sacred Turn Undead. No. Uh, one zero seven k. So it's <laughs> two to one zero seven k. There's got to be some. There's got to be a, a a catch, right? Some downsides. And, and if you say if you say that to me, then I already know what one of the catch is going to be. And I was right in this case. So the first one is if the level of the opponent opposite this is higher than this card's level, it can't front attack. Ooh. So we do have ways to get around that. But yeah, kind of annoying. And when the battle opponent of this is reversed, send that character to memory. I believe this is costed as a detriment. This uh, is a detriment, and I agree. It, it, is, it a is a detriment, a hundred percent. It is only not a detriment when you're playing against cards like the Aqua we literally just talked about, because if it's your turn and you kill that card, it just goes to memory, and they don't get the other, well, the the um the Rize effect, I suppose. Well, they don't get it on either turn. Wait, is it on reverse uh, or no? It's, they don't get it on either turn because it's not. Oh, they, yeah, they just won't get it on even turn. That's um that's pretty strong. So you deny everything that is on stage to waiting room and. That on is your a turn, reason. You deny on reverse. Yeah, that is a re decent reason to run this. On the other hand, kicking something to memory is really bad. Like, we live in a compression focused metagame right now. Um, the top decks are either uh, fast decks with strong end game that, en that aim to ignore compression and just go over the top with lots of tiny little hits, or extremely potent compression decks. And this is really bad uh, against those decks. These, this card gives them free compression that can never be uncompressed. And they don't have to do anything except to give up field briefly. Like, this is the definition of a tempo loss. They give up field, they give up possible damage 
in order to get late game compression. Like this is the definition of tempo wise. And that's a really big problem right now. And it's for that reason that I can't actually rate this card highly, despite it being a very easy way to get pluses. Like this is one of the few cards in Weiss, this effect, the um memory kick, that you can uh that you can mind game your opponent with. Uh if you you're allowed to talk to your opponent during games. So this is a trick I've been doing for ages. It's the only way I've been able to make certain persona decks anything at all. If you convince PTA. Yes, exactly. If you convince them that them running into your characters and getting compression is better for them than you getting pluses, then you get pluses. And that can that if that's actually more valuable for you, then you've you've won something. Not a lot, because you still lose the end game, but it's something. And for that for that reason, I have a soft spot for these cards. That doesn't mean I'm going to say it's anywhere near good. Like, it's not even approaching good because of how bad it can be. As for the other effect, if the level of the character opposite is higher than the level of this, we have, um, uh, we talked about it in the yellow cast. It was a long time ago, so I, I don't know if you remember it. But uh, there's a zero zero which taps to give a character a level until the end of the opponent's turn. Yes. And yeah, that card obviously combos with this. So it makes this into a level two. And then that card can also be used to turn opponents level twos into threes and then play down the darkness advance summon. Which I think is how you'd want to build the blue deck anyway, since Eris is like a, a pretty small advance summon, all things said and done. Uh, yeah. So yeah. if you want to run this card, you can run darkness as well and have like a ghetto non-magic deck. You'd, you'd still want magic level zeros and maybe gates, but, you know, what? I mean, it's it's uh, just fine. It's just fine. Like, I, I, I seriously speak as someone who has abused this effect before and likes the card effect a lot in terms of game design and what it does for the game. I still think it's not a good card. I think it is a playable minus. I agree. I, I mean, I, I tend to enjoy running my things into memory thing kickers. Yeah, of course. It's a, it's a... That's the control thing. You are getting better compression uh, in exchange for short-term loss. Or potential short-term loss. Yeah, it's not even guaranteed short-term loss, so... Yeah, you might cancel. All right. Okay. Next card, 2-1 uh, Eris. It's a 5-5. Five, five. I'll, I'll talk about the most relevant effect first. When this becomes reversed, if the level of the battle, battle opponent is higher than uh, your opponent's level, you may bottom deck it. So it's an anti-change bomb. Uh, very relevant. And then... Uh, when this is placed from hand stage, you may pay one ditch two, so super heavy cost. If you do, choose a character in the waiting room whose level is equal to or lower than your level and place it anywhere on stage. So, yeah. Uh, let's talk about the bomb effect. It's still strong. Like, you do give up some amount of tempo. You give your opponent a free direct attack, but you also kill a probable two soul attacker. So if you think of it that way, you're not really giving that much up. Also, bottom deck is like... Plus, plus. they never get... To... Yeah. It, it, it is strong. Like, it is confirmed damage if they don't shuffle. Uh, you know what's on the bottom of their deck. They can't encore it for obvious reasons. And it by, um, it bypasses the cannot be reversed by auto effects thing, which is, is pretty decent. Uh, the other effect now. So, it's heavily overcosted. Super overcosted. Like, it is... Um, it's technically only overcosted by one stock, uh, in that one card is worth two stock, but one card is not worth two stock. That's a that's a terrible disparity that we only use for like balancing cards. Ditching two cards is an enormous, enormous detriment. You never use this at level two, which is the likely time you play this card. And if you played it at three, then basically you're getting a slightly cheaper than normal um, uh, level three. But if you compare it to the other level threes which have this sort of effect, those ones have a much better, they, they, they're just much better cards. Like if you play those level threes, what you do is you are, you ditch one and then you heal a card from clock to stock. Right? And yeah. it, you, you're not forced to field a 2 one, five, five that doesn't have too much effect. Now, I'm, I'm sure some of you are yelling at your screen right now about the, um, the zero, zero darkness support that we just talked about and uh, can give your opponent's level 3s one extra level to make this card into a bottom deck bomb pretty much always. That's cute, and that's certainly something you can do, 
but that does not change the rating of this card for me significantly. Uh, it is still a bottom deck bomb. I really like that effect. Uh, but I can only give this just a playable plus because it is just a bottom deck bomb and it's becoming more and more ubiquitous nowadays. ReZero has it. Uh, the 2 1 on attack gain absurd amount of power profile is getting a lot stronger. So you've got cards like Sinon now. You've got a card in this set which yeah. gains 6k and has an on reverse salvage. Like, I no that's longer really get strong. infinitely tilted by seeing those things anymore. Mm -hmm. Like that. Oh man. But also, like at the same time, like this effect is now substantially less impressive than it used to be. I, I'm sticking to a, a base playable rating. Um, you'll probably play one anyways. I don't think it's so ubiquitous that it's not a strength of a series yet. And the fact that the meta is very much about landing advanced summon and seeing how much value you can get out of it, that does give this card more value than you might otherwise assign to it, but I still only give it a playable plus. Yep. I'm a little bit lower on it, but I think it's still fine. And I, I would be surprised if you still weren't playing at least one in your list. Yes. All right, on to the uncommons. Uh, yes. Uh, first one, Covered in Slime, Aqua. <laughs> okay. Uh, when this becomes reversed in battle, mill two. If there was at least one level two or higher card, you may stop this. Uh, uh, I actually like this a lot. Um, if you like dumb beaters, but... It's like... He's not even a beater, it's 1-5. I mean, like, this is a, a non-offensive card. This it, is a non-offensive card. That's yeah, what it is. sure. It I does am nothing. Not, I am not overly confused when my opponent plays this onto the field. Uh, I'm not impressed, that, but, like... <laughs> yeah, exactly, I'm not impressed. Uh, this is pretty much strictly a playable minus for me. It doesn't offer very much for me. The, this, like, the, uh, the, the payoff is, on average, like... 0.6 stock, I suppose, something like that. And uh, like... level two or higher, uh, you're playing 18 at most. Yeah, but you're milling two, so there's that. And I'm assuming you get it maybe once every two activations. I'm getting, I'm getting the hypergeometric calculator out. Give me a moment. You, you, you do that anyway. I'm running with the idea that it's just around one in every two tries that you'll get this a activated. I don't think 1-5 is a good enough body. I don't think it does anything else whatsoever. 50-50. Uh, sure, so... Or, sorry, that's exactly. Uh, you're actually close to... With 18 successes and 14 cards in the deck, you're actually looking at an 80% chance to hit at least one. An 80% chance? Wow. Uh, this card this is, is better than no, I 70, thought it was. 70, 70, 70. 70, sure, okay. I mean, that's still better than, than what we were thinking. It's still better than what I thought it was. Yeah. I still don't think that the value of one extra maybe stock is good enough. Mill two is an indeterminate value of... It, it basically has no value in my eyes. Uh, so yeah, you're, you're getting a lot of little benefits. And you get a beta, of course. But it's not really much of beta. Um, I, I still like this, it. I am... I am I regrettably give this a playable minus. I usually give playable minus to cards which would be good if they didn't have a flaw, whereas this card is just thoroughly okay. Like, it's it's medium, <laughs> and everything about it is medium, and the upside is kinda nice, but also medium. I agree I on all of these points. I also agree <laughs> on playable minus. It doesn't mean I don't like this card. Yeah, like, it's, it's, not a, it's not a typical playable minus card. There's nothing bad about it, aside from it not being as good as your other level zeros. Yeah. Anyway, next card. Full of Smiles, Aqua. It's a 0 0 2k. This is when this is placed from hand to stage... Uh, sorry? This looks like it's before the slime. Uh, <laughs> uh, you choose a character with Ventral Goddess and give that card 1,500 for the turn. Uh, this was a 2980 card in Talavru. Talavru was top tier deck for a while, um, and that, that deck ran two of this, so this is good meta plus, right? No. <laughs> I'm happy you at least said that much. Look, this card is perfectly fine. You, you don't, don't get need any it. Yeah, you don't get any tangible advantage of reversing things in this deck, unlike with Tlovru or Gochiusa or any other deck that would consider running something like this. It's not a good card. It's just a fine card. Uh, I, I think in context of the set, it's, it's a playable minus. You just don't need the power bump on offense. Yeah, pretty much. So this is the example of a card which is fine, but doesn't really do anything for the set. Like... 
the base effect is again non-offensive, but in this case, you don't, you just don't need it. Playable minus is fine for this card. Alrighty. All right. Uh, Flattery Aqua zero zero three k. So it's a vanilla with text, which means it's probably got one upside and one downside. <clears throat> so the upside, no, the downside first. When this is placed from hand to stage, choose a standing character and rest it. Which does mean if this is the only card you can play to stage, it rests. That's downside, because if this is the only zero in your opening hand, you skip a turn. The upside is, at the start of your encore step, if you have no other rested characters in your front row, so if you have no characters other than this that are rested, well, this would likely be reversed as well, you may pay one. If you do, rest this card. So basically, if your entire deck, like your entire front row got wiped, you can then you can, pay one. One. you can pay one to quote-unquote plus. I call it a quote-unquote plus because the value of a 003k is questionable at best. And then there's every there's also the very significant chance you got stock kicked or clock kicked, at which point this has no value whatsoever. Um, yeah, you don't need a dumb beater like this. I would ever never. I would never play this card. I would rather play the zero zero vanilla aqua. Man, that's that's how you know it's bad. <laughs> strong stance, strong stance. Sure, like maybe it's too strong of a stance. No, I I, I do agree. I don't. I, like, frankly, the upside is irrelevant, and the downside is relevant. Uh, I wouldn't call the upside irrelevant. Like, it is it's... another way to one cost plus, and it makes your turn two try field look a lot less stupid. It's very close to irrelevant to me. Yes, I agree. Uh, because the quote-unquote plus you get is a really bad character. Yeah. And, and like, how much do you like Zero Zero Vanillas? Because that's still what you're paying for, and that's still... I mean, it's free, I guess, but, like... The, the thing about zero zero Vanillas is that it's like a zero zero Oversize. These are basically zero zero Oversizes at this point. The value of the zero zero Oversize drops so much more steeply than any other archetype in the entire game. That includes, well, everything. Like, this card is... Well, this card, zero zero Oversizes are good on turn one, good on turn two, and then they suck from then on in. Like, this is counting color fixing and everything. This card isn't even that good on turn one. It's, like, like sometimes good on turn one. So this is, like, a zero zero oversize with an abject downside and a barely relevant upside because of how bad these cards are on turn three onwards. I'm calling it bad. All right, I agree with bad. Uh, its upside is vanilla with, like, and then you can pay one to keep a vanilla. It's Maybe like, I don't... survives? I don't, I don't care enough so about bad. that. Yeah, bad, bad is... They wiped you... If they wiped your whole field, including the vanilla, then what's the vanilla gonna do? Yeah, exactly. It's like, uh... well, maybe it'll kill something on the side or direct attack, but that's that's it can be worth it, I suppose. But it takes a lot for it to be worth it. All right, moving downwards. Uh, zero zero four k. Get that hypergeometric calculator out again, would you? Oh, right. Uh, zero zero four k. Uh, when this is placed from hand to stage, mill two. If there was a climax among them, rest this. So. I've been told there's like a a sixty percent chance of this resting. Um, so that, what do we want? What card. do we want the deck size to be? Um, if you're playing it on turn one, then the deck size should be maybe 30, 39, 39, 40. All right, we'll see. And 40. assume you drew, numbers. assume you drew one climax, oh, so seven, uh, seven, seven, seven thirty-nine population. Uh, the pop probability of hitting. One or more climaxes is 32%. Oh, that's really not too bad, then. This is like a 65% chance to be a, a decent card on turn one. And from then on in, it's probably comparable. I mean, this matches uh, my experience with the version of this in Index, so... I mean, the Index one is very different because you get to scry. Oh, yeah. No, you're, like, way better off. That said, I almost always scry second. I almost always cry second, unless I need an Yeah, exactly, unless I need it to stand. And, and you see, every time option... I need it to stand, and I scry, and I leave it on top, the second card is a climax every time. <laughs> yeah, yes, that is <laughs> that is great confirmation bias you've got going there. Every time. <laughs> nah. This card is incomparable to the Index one. Like, the Index one is a, an amazing oversized card, because it's good at all points in the game. Actively good at all points in the game. That can't get exactly much better than that. Insane. This card is this card is slightly worse than that. It's still better than the 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 three K we just talked about. I would I would argue. Uh, in more in a in 
generally more situations. Not in the late game, sure, but these cards both kind of suck in the late game, whereas the index one was just good in the late game, huh? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. This one is definitely better than the Aqua. I'm not going to give this one a bad rating, but I will give it like a... Um, I'm saying play I, I minus. Don't... Like, I've, I've ignored the fact that we've got a runner in this set, so we can kind of talk more about these effects. But we have a runner in this set, so honestly, this is just a bad card. I mean, but, like, yes. it's Aqua Waifu, I suppose. But okay. even Niche then... Minus. <laughs> that's cute. Yeah, we can go... We, we really need, like, a separate Waifu rating, because sometimes the niche rating doesn't quite cut it, hey? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I added it... Oh, wait, where did my dank meme rating go? That's not the wife rating. <laughs> oh, my dank, free, my dank meme rating disappeared. Oh. Well, well, you better, um, what was the studio you used? Visual Studio Plus or whatever? Yeah, yeah. You should get that, um, subscription. Anyway. Uh... Niche minus for now, I would give it the waifu minus rating if that was a rating, but yeah, it's not, so let's not be silly about things. Uh, next card, uh, her style adding fuel to the fire 105k aqua. I ignored it with the Eris, but I'm starting to get upset about how little the color pie matters now, like. There was a time where, like, stock souls were only in yellow and green, and then they just kind of went everywhere, and now I'm sad. So this card has, if you have three or fewer cards in stock, this gains the following ability. When the battle opponent of this is reversed, you may put the top card of your deck in stock. So much for so, green having stock charges effect. I mean, every single every single color has a stock soul now, so it's... Yeah, but I mean, like, I mean, stock charge on reverse. On Yeah, like... This is another Railgun parallel, so this deck is really turning out to just be bad Railgun. Uh, there's a 1-0 zero zero in Railgun. Uh, yeah, a 1-0 rail card in Railgun, which doesn't have the 3 or less stock requirement. It just has a... Uh, if you have another Judgment trait or whatever, um, and that's not too hard to do. So basically, you um you can summon this with the Eris, because it is... A, well, it's both Adventure and Goddess. And when it kills something, if you're lucky, uh, then... It'll be 6k attacking. Uh, there is no way for you to have assigned power with the 0, zero but you might be able to get the 1 0 assist or something. So it's probably going to be like 6 5 attacking, and you get some extra stock if you attack with it probably first. Eh. Uh, yeah, it's like, it's whatever. It's much worse in Railgun um, than it is in Railgun because of this 3 or less stock requirement. And it's not even that good in Railgun. Like, um, this card is fine. I have no issues with it. It will occasionally be pretty decent. It is a better additional stock card than the 0015 we talked about. Yes. But it's still only playable by my reckoning. I think playable is perfectly reasonable. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Next card, Supplying Mana, Aqua. Um, it's a 215k. This is the support for the, uh, the, the Voltron Wombo Combo deck. Uh, it is niche. And I don't really think I need to go too deep into it. I'll, I'll talk about it anyway. It gives all of your other Crimson Demon Megumin the ability to uh, mill the top card of your opponent's deck and then choose a card in their waiting room and put it on top of the library. So Crimson Demon is the uh, it's the Encore Step Deal 5. So basically what this does is it it makes sure that their top card isn't a climax. That is, that's all this card does uh, on that effect. Uh, the next effect, however, is, well, it's also not that great. It just gives 500 an Encore to everything, Hand Encore. Um, eh. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Um, this is a niche card. It goes in the niche deck because it's forced to be in the niche deck. Yep. The end. Full Power Aqua, 216k. Uh, for each of your other Adventure or Goddess characters, this gains 1,000 power. And when this attacks, if you have Sacred Break Spell in the Climax Zone, that one is, uh, the, it's a split 2k one soul, I believe. Sure. Uh, let me just check that. Yes, yeah, split 2k one soul. Uh, if you have that in the Climax Zone, choose one of your opponent's front row characters. That character gets neg 3k and the ability, inability to play climax, um, to play events or backups. So basically, well, this, this is... is it's a huge card. It is um, well, it is very comparable to our 
if you put no, the, if you put the two K one on it, it's functionally attacking for fifteen K on its own. Yes, fifteen K cannot be counted, assuming your opponent's card isn't hexproof, which it sometimes is. Like with um, this sets darkness or um. I mean that's the most relevant one, right? Yeah, but uh, uh, but like okay, it's fifteen k, but you use up a climax slot for that. Well, it's it's yeah, it's still a twelve k, uh, not twelve k. It's uh, it's ten k base. It's a ten k, yeah, which is good. Like that's 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 a very good rate, honestly. Um, what was I going to say? But here's the thing: unless there's something very special about your level two. And by very special, I mean it's better than your level 3 options that you can advance summon. There's not really a reason to play it. So, to my reckoning, there's only like two cards in the entirety of Weiss right now, which I would wholeheartedly recommend over the level 3 options. And they are the Lucia from Guardian and the Sinon from SAO. Yep. And that's because Lucia is a 12k constantly that cannot, like, your opponent can't do anything but event counter, and they probably don't have those. And because Sinon also has the secondary ability of 100% making sure your Climax combo goes off and being a very effect effective anti to anti um, early place. Like, there are obviously, like, the two ones that gain power on attack and get, like, to 13k or whatever. Those are fine as well. But those aren't in competition with your level 3s. A card like this is, because it is just a 10k. It is not bigger than that. It also steals a Climax bot. I think if you're playing this, you're, like, actively losing the game. I'm probably going to be overly hard and just give it a bad. I think this is fine in the, you know, the quote-unquote waifu deck. Uh, but at the same time, you're right in that it is just a 2 one k And if you play the Climax combo, that's not really good. Like, you're not really doing anything except winning the field. And while that can be valuable... There's a reason Railgun isn't just winning everything. People know how to play around field wipes now. Like, it's it's commonplace. And that's why Japan doesn't like the Lucia Climax combo. That's why Japan... Uh, well, I mean, I'm not going to talk too much about Japan, because Japan does many things incorrectly uh, when it comes to level 2 games. Japan makes strange so, decisions. Yeah, it's whatever. Maybe were the strange ones? I don't think so. Anyway, um, playable is... Playable minus is what I'm giving this card. Uh, I do think that the uh, notion of um, of uh, needing a climax slot is bad, but at the same time, do you know what the what climax combos the deck that topped ran? Uh, no. It ran a single copy of the pants for the Aqua Summon, and seven gates without climaxes, without climax combos. Okay. Yep. So I'm I'm gonna bully this deck because again, Seller MB isn't around to defend it. And uh, that is entirely his fault. I mean, I've definitely played decks with no combos. Oh, let's um, let's let's also mention that split two K one soul isn't good. No, at all. No, it is not. it's it's just not very strong. <laughs> anyway, let's go on. Eh, I guess you could give it a worse rating. Whatever, I don't care. It's not a good card. Um, zero zero one K. Here's where the adventure starts. Aqua. <laughs> oh, it's this card. Uh, assist five hundred and tap this to give a character with adventure or goddess one thousand power for the turn. So, um, Ripperoni and Pepperonis, Shakugan or Shana players. Yeah. Your double R has been functionally outclassed by a common which doesn't even see significant play. This is a fine card. It is a fine assist. It gives you a non-negligible amount of a power on offense. Like, that is... This is equivalent to um, Zen 3 and Kantai. And that card was good enough to push Kantai's pretty decent level 1 game to pretty damn good. Additionally, um, this card only taps itself, which means you can use the other spot to tap for the uh, Pumping Level Darkness or the, uh, the, the Self-Tap brain Brainstorm. Storm. Yeah, the Bad Brainstorm, which is fine but um i think the primary thing this card does is in the deck that runs the 7k aquas uh it gives them a bit more oomph on offense and it's also fine with the um the eris combo because it does make those cards into effective 8-5 attackers when everything is said 8-5 8-5 when everything is said and done which is uh, that's more uh, than maybe 8-5 if you're not using it to pull this from the waiting room 
Oh yeah, of course. Like um, if you're pulling something from the waiting room, and um, like you have to do this in main phase, obviously. Uh, Which makes it kind of a nombo with the zero zero that you do want your back row. I agree. Uh, I still think it's more than fine with that combo because you just draw it and play it, then you can still have like two slots where stuff happens. I think this is more than fine. I think this is very high playable. Um, not playable plus because it is just a support. I, I it agree does... with just playable. It kind of scales okay into the late game too, right? Like, um, I mean, it's... the fifteen hundred power is not negligible. It it does things. Fifteen hundred power matters. That's a full counter. Uh, it means like their their three K counter might not be good enough anymore. Mm. Yeah, I'm happy about it. Um. All right. So next card, the goddess in charge of a backwater, Eris, is a zero zero two five. When this is placed from hand to stage, mill two, and this card gains X power, where X is one thousand times the number of adventurer goddesses you milled that way. This is I have, terrible. Yeah. Well, I've just historically never had much. I've never cared much for these cards. I think this is a better card than the four K Aqua because it will never come in tapped. And... It doesn't make it not terrible. Yeah, but the times the times that the 4K wouldn't come in tapped, this card is bigger than it anyway on offense, and that makes like this this makes it better than the 4K, in my opinion. Sure, I actually think that's perfectly reasonable. I do think this is better than the 4K. I do not think the 4K is very good. <laughs> this is like, I, I don't even think I gave the 4K playable each. minus, right? I you can give this one playable minus as well. I think. Yeah, They're like the same card. This one's not that much better than it. Well, I guess it is a lot better than it. 30% better than it, because that 30% is how much time the other one comes in tapped. This one never comes in tapped. Next up 2. is... 2.5 is kind of big. Yeah, that's next card. Uh, quest clear. Quest clear, Aqua to vanilla. Uh, we should mention this is the vanilla you need for the 1-0 yellow dude to become like a 6k or whatever. I don't Doesn't know. Doesn't make it not bad. The art is funny. Uh, I would actually play this card in Aqua Waifu purely for the art. Uh, I also don't like any of the other Aqua quote-unquote oversizes, so I'm going to give it a uh, a very a very fervent niche rating. Of course you are. <laughs> I actually think this might be her best level zero. Oh my god. <laughs> level zero beater anyway. It's a right. little castle's counter. Um, this is fine. Uh, the only other costless counter at level 1 is a 1k that has a really bad anti-change cost. Uh, there might be one on the trial deck, I'm not sure, but, uh, yeah, this card is therefore playable, not good. Yeah. Because, like, this with the, uh, 107k Aqua is, it's, it's, it's a field. It's, it's not terrible. If you can mind give them to just running things in, then you don't need this. It's like how the best number of Lucifer is zero. Nature's Beauty, Aqua, 1035. Uh, so this is what I was talking about earlier. Uh, I misread this card on my first run through, so I feel a bit silly. Uh, you can pull this out with um uh, with the with the advanced not advanced one with the climax oh, combo and you have a five hundred assist. It's, pay to it's tap got heal. Yeah, it's got pay to tap. It's not a plus unless you counter unless you counter heal as a plus. I don't. And it seems some people do, but you I don't. No, I don't think he should. Uh, you can heal with this. You can start healing at level um at level one with your not very much stock, and that seems incorrect. You can still pull this out as just a global five hundred. Wombo not... combo. You're just playing all the cards to generate extra stock. It combos so well with the one zero five k that gets you <laughs> an extra stock, so you can activate you this twice each turn. <laughs> so, um, Terra is not here, but do you remember the, uh, the one zero yellow, which has the Miller card, if X, your opponent gets a stock, if not X, you get two stock? Yes, combos. This is, this is how we go off there. This is the combo. Anyway, uh, this is a playable minus. I think it is a fine global, and it can be a heal in the late game, I suppose. If I had a dank, as, if I had a dank like, meme rating to give, this would honestly get the dank meme rating. It's not as bad as you say it is. Like a repeatable heal on a costless body is fine. Like it's, it's oh, not I'm not the saying worst it's not fine. Ever. I'm just saying like I almost oh, never want to pay two stock deck. for this. In the context of the meme deck, I guess. Anyway, 
All right, boss of the Aqua Cult, Axis Cult Aqua, uh, 105k. When another character with a Ventura or Goddess attacks, this gains 1k for the turn. So she's a so cult master? Uh, so uh, the plotline of this story is that um, MC dies like a jackass. Like, he wasn't supposed to die. He just died because he was a retard. And um, uh, this girl, the Goddess, laughs at him because he's a retard. And I then mean, um, he died. out of... Yeah, like, he's, he, she's like, so this world is being overrun. We can send you there to restart your life, and you can have one uber-powerful gift, like a broken RuneScape item. Uh, and uh, to spite her, the dude brings her along. Like, he says, I, I want you because you're a goddess. And that's... that's. <laughs> and in, in this world, the goddess has a cult. So the cult is d dedicated to her, but... They do not realize it's her, and there are jokes. Um, that was my my anime list set review for Konosuba, and it's a good show. You should watch it. This card is good with the Eris One Zero, in that you can pull it out, attack with like Eris Eris, and then have a seven K that doesn't kick things to memory. Yep. But unfortunately, isn't a seven K on defense. So pick your poison. For that reason, it is begrudgingly playable <laughs> i would play it as like a one or two off this is a four of in shiro waifu but that is a completely different story that's also a terrible deck i disagree it is a high mid-tier deck by my reckoning uh... Demani... you've got global clock on core in the deck man that's like the best level zero in the game I'm not saying uh, that. But that's like getting carried. <laughs> You're just getting carried by like this card. Yeah. All right. Next card. Demanding apology. Aqua. One one five five. Uh, for each of your other characters with adventure or goddess, this gains five hundred power. So this is the sort of card you'd want to use the bad brainstorm with in order to give it encore. So you get. Oh wait, it has encore already. It's also cost one. <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing. You're supposed to give it encore so your one cost doesn't go to waste. And then you realize it just has Encore already. And every Angel Beats player around the world sheds a single tear. Why? <laughs> oh, man, this card is awful. It's not awful. It's just not good. There it's are like... literally zero synergies for this card. And to play it, then, your payoff is to get, like... It's it's like a, a functional 7, 8K. A 5 8K it hand is... Encore for one stock? <laughs> yeah, it's like an 8K that uh, beats... Up the the one ones that get power when facing a costless character. That's what they do. Oh man, oh man, <laughs> oh man. This is still just playable minus. Like you can't call this a bad card. And I'm not I saying it's not you... not it's, it's not bad. It's playable minus. Playable minus is accurate, but like, oh man. I wouldn't call you bad for playing this against me. Like it's a fine card. It just I would stare at you questioningly. A... Would you actually like as a one off? I don't of, mind no, the one I can of. accept one of. But like, keep in mind, like the last time I played a card like this, I literally played it in, like, this is my quota. I feel like my quota. Kagant Shooter. And it's not because <laughs> I wanted to. Right? It's because, like, your level zero, uh, level one options in that deck are, like, the the broke-ass combo. That combo <laughs> is, in fact, broken. What about the 107k that dies on front attack? <laughs> that, no, we don't talk about that one, although it is stock bondable. That is an upside. <laughs> Yeah, that's a great card, man. But you have like a anyway. 1065 and a 117k hand encore. We don't talk about those deck cards. Like they're not good. They're just no, we we deck. don't we don't talk about them because the Gigant shooter cards and I, we might be the only people in the world who actively know what those cards do. Hey man, it's a 30 card <laughs> EV. It's not that hard. <laughs> yeah, but no one's ever read them. Anyway, this card is playable minus. So you play one if your opponent can't easily answer it, and it might do some work. If it doesn't, like, if your opponent's forced to ram into this, that's actually fine. That's something I'd pay one for, but you can usually do that with the 107k as well. So playable playable minus is fine for this card, I think. I think I'd rather play the 107k. I mean, that one does kick to memory. That is a big downside. I'm not saying it isn't. I still think I'd rather play it, though. Yeah, but you'd play, like, four of that and, like, one to two of this. Probably. Anyway, let's... I haven't actually built this deck, so I don't know. Uh, Aqua, ways to make the drink tastier. It's a 2175. If you've got Flattery Aqua... Oh, is that really... Oh, okay. So Flattery Aqua is 
the really bad 003k we talked about. Yeah. So in order to get a 1175 without hand on core, you have to play the 00 and clock it. If you're playing this card and not the 1-1 one, one hand on core we just went over, then I really stare at you questioningly. We haven't talked about the other text is, which is when you level up, this gains one cost on core for the turn. Does not make it any better. Oh, I think it probably makes it worse because that's text that could be replaced by something else. Like, I don't know, a thousand power. This card is really not good. Holy this this is a bad card. Not only is it like a bad card on its own right, but it's a oh, bad it's card a bad in bad context. Cards. You gotta play bad cards with it. You it's gotta like, play bad yeah, cards to it's... make your... No, but it's like, it's normally you play bad cards and other bad cards to maybe do something like that's acceptable, right? But here no, you're playing yeah, a bad card and a bad card and the sum of their parts is still terrible. That's the thing. You're playing a bad card to make a terrible card bad. No. No. Why did we talk so long about this card? Uh, next card. Stunned Aqua. It's a 2 2 8k. When this is placed from hand to stage, if you have four more characters with Adventure or Goddess, you may stock a character in your waiting room. Which is cool i guess uh encore it's pretty much character encore it's it's discard an adventure or goddess yes i think this card is like fine it's a one cost two soul beta it's slightly below power level but it does have encore so um i actually think this is fine if you yeah. feel like you want a two soul beater for on the cheap sure this is fine i don't think it's you need fine. it yeah, it's fine in the same way the 1175 is fine in that you're not going to act go out of your way to play it. But if for some reason you have spots or if you need to fill out the waifu deck, which I think you probably do, uh, this is this is fine. It's a playable minus. I would not play this card, though, personally. No, um, not in anything but the waifu deck. No, in that case, you'd probably give it a niche, right? Like, or like a waifu. I mean, I would give it a playable minus because, like, I can see someone thinking they need a one-stock two-soul beater. Well, I mean, I can see people doing anything. Have you have you seen the the, the winning Kono Super deck list? I mean, I keep hearing you talk about it, and I kind of just don't want to see it. You don't you don't want to see it. Trust me, just don't look it up. Anyway, uh, last two cards, two cards, two cards. Two cards. We got the two events. The first one is God Blow, so uh, you should probably code up that dank meme rating because we need it right now. Uh, so I think one... I can manually type this one in. All right. Choose one goddess character. That character gains 50 soul and the following three abilities. This cannot yes. side attack. The character opposite this will not be reversed. This activates once per turn. When the damage dealt by you is cancelled, draw three cards and discard two cards. This card is awful. Okay, so let, let's talk about what this actually does. So... There is, like, some really mild justification for playing this card. Firstly, it is a wash. Like, you don't neg from this. You will always go get even. three cards from the top of your deck and have to discard two, so you go plus zero. Second? Well, it, yep. not necessarily plus zero. If you lose That's the true. combat... You're if your character dies, then you go neg one. <laughs> but let's assume that does And, and it's happen. not actually possible to plus because you can never actually reverse the other character. You also can't side, so if they counter, then you get wrecked. Well, if they counter, it's still a it, it's still a wash then because they use oh, that's one card. True, yeah, that's true. They use the card. It's a wash. <laughs> Look, questionable math, math mathematics aside. What this card does is it gives up one of your attacks in order to draw three ditch two for zero cost. Now, draw three ditch two for zero cost is enormously powerful. That is super good. I hear super powerful. Is a good magic card. Yeah, but well, this is kind of like a well, it's a better brainstorm in a way because of the way stock and mana because of how stock and mana work. But. Why is a game about turning things sideways and dealing damage? You will never deal damage with this card. Unless you like live Ever. the literal dream. Basically, if you think you're gonna, the opponent's gonna cancel the the attack of whatever you attack with this on, then this card has no downside. 
if they weren't going to cancel the attack, like, God forbid you're just attacking without a climax and you swing and it's for one and they would have taken the one, but instead they go 14 cards down and they hit a climax. That's the oh, absolute man. worst. If case they go scenario. 14 cards down and they hit a climax, and you're just like, man, I should have just played two soul. <laughs> exactly. Uh, that's obviously the worst case scenario. I think the more common thing that will happen will it'll be like Three five cards four. down. Yeah. So you give up you give up the attack completely, and you can't possibly know whether you're going to cancel or not, unless your opponent very recently scried something. Like with a, uh, I can't think of a great example off the top of my head. Maybe like the three two Shizuru from rewrite. Like whatever. Whatever. So yeah, this card um, is super powerful as an effect. Solid dank meme rating. Super weak when, unless you know you're going to cancel, and you can't possibly know that. Like, maybe if you're a flow master, like the recently deceased Samson Chow, God rest his soul. Oh, did he die recently? He's, he's not dead. He he's just stopped playing Weiss pretty much entirely. I mean, Ruby uh, Baroni Samson. It doesn't stop us from using his name on deck lists. Actually, I think he um, I think he like he was talking about playing like lb recently so maybe he's maybe he's not dead well i mean like I we, we still need to like make sure we we keep the samson chow meme alive and yeah, everyone remember to submit samson chow as the name of your deck list i hear heart of the cards now shrinks his name to samson c but we they all know who that is they've threatened to ban people have they really on deck list. yes do they know they've who said... samson chow is yes they do he, he's been sent emails about this they've they've said to people if samson complains about this we will ban you that that's a thing they have done Dang, and, he and that, has that, it that over us now me. yeah but so uh yeah but he's, God blow. but he's canadian he's... you're a canadian you're samson yeah, sure. Yeah, we're still going with that, are we? I think it's... Uh, yeah, all right, I'm Canadian. I'm, I'm Samson Chow. 1-0 <laughs> event. Really strong effect. You're giving up an attack. That is the most important thing in Weiss. You are giving up the most important thing in Weiss for something that is significantly less important. And you can't even do it immediately. Like, that's the other thing. It's time delayed, draw three, ditch two. So you can't even, like, draw three immediately, get your climax, play it. That's not something you can do. So overall, this is a dank meme rating. If I were to actually give this card a rating, it would probably just be bad. Yeah, I think I agree with that. Uh, next card, and last card. Nearly done. Senpai appears. 2-1. If you have no goddess characters, you can't play this from your hand. Uh, sure. Choose up to two of your characters with adventure or goddess, and they gain the ability. When this was placed from stage to waiting room, you may put this rested in that card's slot. Uh, so this is a more fairly costed version of, I think, the Dog Days one. Um, uh, I feel like this is a more Roaches flavor one? card. Uh, it's uh, it's like a it's a red one three event or something, one two. I don't I don't remember. Uh, uh, I don't remember. I I know roaches have this, but like roaches is roaches. Double quota fulfilled. You know this I gotta card, fulfill the list, right? There's this like checklist I, going to every video. I know it's a contract. This card, I think, is here for flavor reasons more than it is for actual playability reasons. There are a few cards that you would like to save with this card. For example, the 2-1 that gains 6k I mean, uh, on attack. This is, this is theoretically a one-cost plus one. Yes. Yes, it is. But it is an unsalvageable counter... Requires you to have a goddess trait on the field. That's harder than you might think it is, unless you're playing a heavy level one lineup. Unless because you're literally playing mono blue, in which case, like, yes, you have a goddess all, on the field. All your back row is like not this. Like Takitsubo is adventurer and uh, desires. Um, brainstorms are adventurer magic. Oh, you can have the bad brainstorm, I guess. I mean, um, your your front row in the blue deck is going to be aquas, which are all adventure and goddess. So. Yes. So if or you're Harris, if you're playing so the blue still deck, got us. exactly. So if you're playing the blue deck, then yeah, you can you can use this to some decent effect. But since this is not salvageable, it is contingent on you playing a specific deck or having a specific not even that great card. It's niche. I only, yeah, it's niche. Like it is a fine effect. It is. Oh, now I think about it. This card is in LB, but it's a two two. It's a two two in LB. Oh. I it's, don't know. It's what two two because there's no trait restriction. Well, I mean, like, the one in Terraformers requires you to sack, but that's honestly upside. Yeah. 
Uh, I think this is just niche. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. All right. Uh, now, because it's just me and Will, we neither of us play Konosuba. We're not going to do a set roundup review, but um, you can get a pretty good idea of what Konosuba is based on like deck lists and stuff. You can just go on Twitter and search them out. Uh, I'm not going to go over it in the video, but people play the TD combo more than they more than they really should. Kona Super is a, a, a perfectly reasonable set, like easily top 15, top 10 is a bit pushing it, I think. Anyway, uh, that concludes our blue review. And for this particular set, that concludes all our set reviews. So um, remember to, uh, well, I'm not going to tell you to like, comment, subscribe or whatever. I'm not quite that much of a shill. What well, uh, you just but, did. Oh, I, I specifically said I'm not going to, which is... Like, if you understand English, I use the word not. So, so got, gotcha. Um, I, I, I don't know what else to say. Well, I think this is like <laughs> now our second, third year doing videos. Oh, we've been doing videos for quite a while, yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah, cool. So, um, do whatever. Uh, leave comments, leave hatred, top tier cancer, hashtag top tier cancer. I think that's what we got called on Facebook recently. Hashtag Duff Nguyen. Yeah, um, and I can't believe there's someone like so committed to hating on us. I, I'm that that just shows we've actually done something, right? <laughs> I mean, it, it shows that people at least care about what we say. Yeah. Well, they care enough to to, to shit on us. And that's, exactly. That's honestly pretty funny. So uh, yeah, continue shitting on us. Continue giving us feedback. I, I'm uh, gonna be real. We really just feed on the trolls. Like, we love yeah, it. It's, it. We, we, it, it we doesn't love, really affect us. We love it. We live. It, it, we live by it. Oh, but if you start bad-mouthing other randoms, then that's not cool, man. Re reassess your life. So, with that aside, thanks for listening. Um, I will shill out now. If you want to like, comment, subscribe, do that. If you don't want to, that's cool as well. We'll be around. We're very slow these days because uh, it's mostly just me, really, isn't it? Like, um, you, you, uh, I'm about I mean, to start full-time soon as well, though, so... Yeah, I mean, yeah, well, between us, we'll be able to find some time. Anyway, yeah. thanks for listening, and uh, we'll uh, see you for Chain Chronicle at some point.